Hey guys, here we see Wing Commander running on computer parts that nobody wants. And it's running at the perfect speed. And those of you who know Wing Commander, you know what that means. It means perfect speed compatibility with a wide range of DOS games, avoiding those speed bugs and timing issues. All the parts have really gone up in value, like a 386, a 486, Pentium, a slot one, Pentium two or Pentium three. These all have gone up in price and we can also see the Pentium 4 and the Athlon 64 are slowly starting to creep up because word is spreading. They are fantastic for MS-DOS and Windows 98 retro gaming. With the newer parts, a stagnation in technology means that something like a sandy bridge, upgrade the RAM, put in an SSD, you can still use it as your daily driver. But there is one platform that people are ignoring. No one really wants to use it anymore. And that's what we're talking about here. It is nothing other than the famous LGA775 platform with the Intel Core 2 Duo. DOS gaming without a sound card can be a pretty boring experience with just the plain PC speaker. But even here, there is a sound chip that you can find on many sound cards still available to this day that people tend to be ignoring. It's an Asus P5 KPL AMSE and even back in the day this was not a very desirable main board. It has an Intel G31 chipset which was sort of bottom of the barrel. We've got two PCI Express slots, 16 lanes and one lane and also PCI, two SATA ports and a port for IDE devices. Two PS2 ports, which is very retro friendly. VGA out, so we could use the onboard Intel graphics and even drive a CRT monitor. Zero port, four USB ports, Ethernet and audio. For the processor, we're using an Intel Core 2 Duo. This is the E4400 running at two gigahertz with a 800 megahertz FSB. And we're using this really budget LGA775 cooler. I like this one. That one comes with a back plate. That means I can uh, mount the cooler without too much mounting pressure so that the board doesn't bend too much. And we don't need anything fancy. At two gigahertz, the heat uh, produced is very minimal. With the RAM, less is more, especially for DOS gaming. This is the smallest DDR2 memory module I found. It has 512 megabytes. A while ago, I uh, bought these cheap used SanDisk SSDs from eBay. It's the U100. And these are retro friendly, only 32 gigabytes because a lot of the machines I use have biases with capacity limitations. And we're using MS-DOS 6.22, which supports only two gigabyte partition sizes. And yeah, worked beautifully for this project. For graphics, you can go with the onboard Intel graphics. It has VGA output at the back, but capturing is easier if you have HDMI or DVI, and that's why I'm using this video card. So this is not necessary. It's basically to make it easier to record footage for this video. This is a video card from Asus with a GPU from ATI, a Radeon 4650. There are some nice DOS compatible PCI sound cards very uh, sought after like the Yamaha YMF or the ESS Solo One. But there is one chip, one audio chip that no one really wants. It's from C Media and there are many flavors. You will find this chip on all sorts of cheap PCI sound cards that you can find online. Now, granted, this is a very nice version using that C Media audio chip. It's from AOpen, the Cobra AW850 and yeah, has line out, all the uh, input, line in, microphone. It's got a game port, MIDI port, and also all the mixer inputs to connect your optical disk drive as well as a PC speaker connector. Here we're taking a closer look at the chip from C-Media. It is the CMI8738. There are lots of ways to install MS-DOS on this machine. I like to use the USB external version of the GoTek floppy emulator. However, you can also use a USB thumb drive and prepare it with Rufus. And then I'm basically partitioning the SSD, formatting it, I'll make it bootable 
and then I shut down the computer and I use a USB adapter to connect the SSD to my modern computer and then I copy games, benchmarks, drivers across. DOS performance is excellent, 676.4 FPS in the PC player benchmark and then Quake runs at 473.9 FPS. This by the way is the DOS benchmark pack, you can download it from our website. It's a collection of popular DOS benchmarks that are put together with a really easy to use start menu. But for many DOS games this is way too fast and slow is good for retro gaming. So let's go into the BIOS and I'll show you how you can slow down this computer. So we're lowering the FSB, the front side bus, from 200 to 133 megahertz. Then we can also lower the RAM multiplier in the BIOS option instead of 800, set it to 667. We can also change the RAM timings. I'm lowering, uh, making the RAM timings slower. And we can configure the CPU multiplier from 10x, which is the default, down to 6x. And then in MS-DOS, thanks to the Vogons community, we have a really cool utility called setmul. We can run that to disable the CPU cache. And look at that now, PC player benchmark 1.7 and the 3D bench gives us 8.0. So while slow is good, 8.0 is a little bit too slow for my liking. It's roughly on the level of a fast 286, maybe a 286 running at 20 megahertz. What you can do now to dial in the speed is basically play with those BIOS options that I changed before, the front side bus, the multiplier, the RAM speed and the memory timings. And here I'm maxing everything out, but I leave the CPU cache disabled and we're getting a 3D bench score of 12.8. It's a little bit too fast for Wing Commander, but here it is running Wing Commander. And yeah, that is quite an achievement. Wing Commander is a very speed sensitive game. It means a ton of DOS games from that era will run perfectly fine on this machine without any timing and speed bugs. So there's a lot you can adjust through just the BIOS settings or disabling the cache, but there's more. And this is where the retro uh, PC gaming community is really fantastic. New discoveries are being made to this day. Big shout out to the Vogons community. There is a user, DW is his name, and he made a utility, CPU Speed, that can uh, configure something inside the Core 2 Duo processor. The feature is called on-demand clock modulation and it works similar to duty cycle. There's a setting between one and eight. Let's say you configure it at four, which is uh, the halfway setting. It means every second clock cycle will be, will be skipped, effectively halving the speed of your processor. And by playing around with this utility, as well as disabling the CPU cache, we have now 3D Bench running at 9.2. Perfect for Wing Commander, but let's add some sound. Without sound, these games feel a little bit lifeless. There is a DOS driver for the sound card. It installs everything automatically and we can see here. I put a screenshot of the driver initialization page. So we're getting address 220, interrupt 5, DMA1, as well as the FM configured to address 388 and a MIDI port at 330, which is perfect. We also get a nice mixer utility where you can configure all the volume balances and configure them to your liking. The CM8738 chip has a really wonderful FM audio implementation. Let's listen to Monkey Island 2.
So Wing Commander and Monkey Island 2, they're running at the perfect speed and we're getting some nice sound. Let's check out a few more games. I just wanted to see what compatibility is like as well as record a few more sound examples. Compatibility is interesting. For games that you want to play with AdLib, the compatibility I would say is almost perfect. You will have a high success rate. In terms of Sound Blaster compatibility, it is a bit of a mixed bag. It depends on the game and its trial and error. But it is the situation, you know, if you uh, source parts that no one wants and you uh, trying to build a DOS retro gaming PC on a budget. You can't be too picky. Um, focus on the games that do work. There are many, many, many games that will work just fine on this sound card. So guys, this project actually surprised me a little bit. I did not expect things to work this well. So everything is bare metal, no emulation. It's true hardware. And you can connect a CRT monitor to the VGA port and have a really nice experience. Use some PS2 devices, maybe a, a USB to PS2 adapter for a nice optical mouse. You can uh, connect an optical drive and you will get a really decent retro gaming PC. I also like that some of these parts that people don't really pay too much attention to uh, can be used for DOS gaming. Who would have thought that a C Media sound card might have some sort of a <laughs> desirability, but yeah, the FM audio is beautiful. It sounds better than the ESS Solo 1, for example, and that is actually quite an achievement. At this point in time, uh, retro hardware is still sort of affordable, but who knows what's going to happen in 5 to 10 years. So keep your eyes out for some LGA 775 main boards and Sound cards with C media, especially some of the branded ones that have nice inputs, inputs and outputs and connectors for your optical drive. Um, maybe if you pick up the cheapest C media card from AliExpress or eBay, uh, like those wedge shaped cards, I don't think they are that decent, so you might have to look a little bit uh, in more detail. DOS gaming is not the easiest to get going. There's a lot to know about uh, the memory configurations, uh, startup files and so on. But I've put together a couple of resources to make life easier. I will link them down below in the uh, video description to help you out to get up and running uh, with minimal delay. And now I want to hear from you. What do you think about this project? Do you feel that LGA 775 and C Media sound cards yeah, will, are they going to become desirable at some point? Well, definitely prices will go up. The 775 platform, uh, it was very popular. Um, AMD struggled to compete for a long time with the Athlon 64 X2 and then later the Phenom uh, 2 and the original Phenom series. And uh, a lot of us have really fond memories of them. So yes, at some point people will have nostalgic feelings for this platform. Uh, but that's more to do with Windows XP. Uh, Windows Vista, that was sort of the uh, software operating system platform at the time. Who would have thought that they're even good at DOS gaming because of the ability to slow down the cache and configure the duty cycle in the processor. So guys, there you have it. We built a DOS retro gaming PC with good success from parts that no one really wants at the moment. So. There's nothing as exciting as the present. There are always cheap parts. Yes, if you are uh, lusting after some uh, original vintage parts, then yes, prices have gone up, but there's always something that is dirt cheap and that people don't want. And yeah, that's what we're doing here on the channel. Have some fun with old computers 
to play those classic games. If you found the video interesting, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, share it with your friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. I shall see you soon with another one.